God's people may respond by saying, Amen. Scripture lessons for us continue on this Mother's Day. Genesis chapter 1, the beginning of all things. From the 24th chapter, we pick up the story. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing. Livestock, crawling things, and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them, male and female. God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give to you all the plants on the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produces its seed within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything he had made. It was supremely good. There was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Eternal God, may we recognize, remember, know in our hearts and minds that you are still supremely good. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some days are picture days. Christmas, Easter, on the 4th of July, we take pictures of fireworks. On Thanksgiving, at least around my house, we take pictures of the table. Family, yeah, but we really want to remember the food. Some days are picture days. Mother's Day seems like one of those days. In a picture-perfect world, the family gets together, mom is there, maybe we even have more than one generation of moms, and so there's kids and grandkids and so forth, and before long, somebody gets out their phone and starts taking pictures. And then they start texting them to one another, send me that picture, someone says. And before you know it, all kinds of pictures commemorating the day appear on Facebook and Instagram, and you better look quickly if they're on Snapchat because they disappear just as quickly as they appear. We like looking at pictures, but at the risk of sounding like old school guy, when, picked, when taking pictures was a little more complicated, it almost seemed more special. You see, nowadays, anyone can take really good pictures with their phone. But back in the day, pictures began with film. You had a camera like this one. This is a 35 millimeter camera. It's a Minolta XG1. This is a very inexpensive aperture preferred exposure camera. You got out your camera, you set the aperture, you focus the lens, and then, then you take a picture. But before you ever saw any of these pictures in real life, first, the film had to be developed. This 
is a developing tank. You see, when you were finished shooting pictures with your camera, you opened the back of the camera, you removed the little canister that held the rewound film, don't forget to rewind it, and then you either took it someplace like photomat, <laughs> or you developed it yourself. I liked to develop black and white film myself. So you take the film out of the back of the camera, you pop off the metal lid of the canister containing the film, and you unwind the film from the spool, and you wind that film onto this bigger spool, and then as you're putting the spool back into the canister, you put on the top. By the way, you had to do all these things in the dark with no light whatsoever. But once you put the top back on, then you pour in a concoction of chemicals into the tank at various intervals, agitating in between. And pretty soon, guess what? You got film ready to be printed. Now, making the actual prints is a whole other process. But remember that before you ever saw how a picture was going to turn out, First, you had to develop the film. Then you see the image. Genesis chapter 1, beginning with verse 24. We heard it moments ago. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing. Livestock, crawling things, wildlife, and that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls along the ground. And God saw how good it was. Verse 26, then God said, let us make humanity in our own image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth and all the crawling things on earth. Verse 27, God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. It is Amago Dei, the image of God. Human beings, similar in likeness to God. We are created with unique abilities, abilities that are absent in all other creatures of this earth, abilities that reflect the divine nature of God. This, of course, is a pre-fall story. In other words... Adam and Eve and the apple and the serpent, all those things haven't happened yet. It won't take long, just a couple of chapters, before disobedience to God rears its head. And the image of God imprinted upon us at creation becomes distorted, fuzzy, out of focus. And it will take nothing less than the incarnation, God taking human form in Jesus Christ, to begin restoring the image of God to our lives. It's a process. Methodists might call it sanctification the pursuit of becoming perfect in love. Maybe we'll just call it the image of God developing in us, which happens sometimes, oftentimes, gradually. The text we use today in our call to worship, 2 Corinthians 3 begins with verse 16 saying, when someone turns back 
to the Lord. The veil is removed. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Lord's Spirit is, there's freedom. Verse 18, all of us are looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord. As if we were looking in a mirror. We are being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. And this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Paul is saying we are being transformed. That means the transformation is not yet complete. In other words, we're still developing. But day by day, degree by degree, we reflect more and more of the radiance of the coming age when we turn toward God. Interestingly enough, though, Paul says in verse 18, it's as if we're looking in a mirror. That means the image is reversed. A mirror image is a reverse image, which is not unlike a photo negative, which is what actually comes out of this developing tank. When you develop your film, what you get is a roll of photographic negatives. And in order to see the true image that you have a picture of, in order to see the true image, the film negative must somehow be made into a positive. You must imprint the image onto paper. But how is God's image imprinted upon us? How does the recovery of the image of God in us that Christ began on the cross develop? It develops through Scripture through worship, through acts of charity and compassion, through the sacraments, through seeking justice, through accountability to one another, through prayer and fasting, through sharing your faith with others. These things that Mr. Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement, called means of grace. And sometimes, sometimes, the image of God develops in us through other people. Today's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Just like the means of grace we were talking about before, Mother's Day is a Methodist thing. In May of 1908, a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis organized the very first official Mother's Day celebration at Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Shout out to our West Virginia contingent. Anna organized it, but it was her mom, Ann Jarvis, who conceived of the idea. Ann Reeves Jarvis, Anna Jarvis's mother, was convinced she was convinced that mothers needed to, must work in this world for peace because she knew that only a mom could see the ravages of war in their sons. Anne believed that mothers had to do this work in a way that was so focused and so clear that the voices of these mothers would be powerful. That's the genesis of what we now know as Mother's Day. Ann Reeves Jarvis died in 1905, well before President Woodrow Wilson issued a proclamation declaring the first National Mother's Day on May 9th, 1914 precisely 107 years ago today. But Anne's daughter, Anna, 
who, by the way, never had children herself. Anne's daughter, Anna, never lost sight of the true purpose of the celebration. Anna envisioned Mother's Day as a time to write a personal letter to your mother, a time to send her an inexpensive carnation, a time to go to church together. And it was Anna Jarvis who later became an outspoken critic when she saw the special day turn to commercial. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in the first verse, we heard it moments ago. Understand, Paul writes, that the last days will be dangerous times. People will be selfish and love money. They will be the kind of people who brag and who are proud. They will slander others, and they will be disobedient to their parents. They will be ungrateful, unholy, unloving, contrary, and critical. They will be without self-control and brutal, and they won't love what is good. They will love pleasure instead of loving God. Verse 10, Paul writes, But you have paid attention to my teaching, my conduct, my purpose, my faithfulness, my patience, my love, my endurance. You've seen me experience physical abuse and ordeals in places like Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. I put up with all sorts of abuse, and the Lord rescued me from it. In fact, Paul writes, Anyone who wants to live a holy life in Christ Jesus will be harassed. Verse 14, but you must continue with the things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you've known the Holy Scriptures that help you to be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Every Scripture, Paul says, is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. Paul reminding us every scripture is useful for teaching, for revealing mistakes, for helping us develop character. But did you hear? Were you listening to how he said we often experienced scripture? Verse 14. Paul says, you know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Who teaches children Scriptures? Parents? Mothers? And other kind, noble, faithful women who teach God's ways? whether it's in Sunday school or Monday through Friday school, in homes and neighborhoods and church, mothers and grandmothers and stepmothers and women like Anna Jarvis who never had children of their own but who mothered lots and lots of kids. They are the ones who help restore Imago Dei, the image of God. They imprint it onto the children whom they love. And even for those mothers who struggled to do so, for whom their lives and their relationships with their families were not picture perfect. 
Now, this day isn't a tragedy. But rather, it's an expression of hope. That as moms help their kids show the world what God looks like, the likeness of God. As moms help their kids show the world the likeness of God, God might show every struggling mom God's merciful face. A face of compassion. Imago Dei. The image of God. Which is better looking than any Mother's Day greeting card. And more encouraging than even a Mother's Day phone call. But if you can, call your mom today anyway. Okay? Let us pray. Lord God, restore in us the image of God, the truth of who you are, so that uh, as others look upon those who've been created in God's image, in your image, they might see a reflection of you, not a perfect reflection, but one that grows a little better, a little more perfect each and every day we follow you. Bless moms who help teach that image and who bear that image themselves. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is our hope and prayer that you have seen the image of God today in our worship service and that because you have witnessed that, you have been transformed. If that is the case and you would like to make a first-time profession of faith for Jesus Christ, if you would like to rededicate your life to Christ, if you would like to experience